Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 3.3, part 1. We're going to look at multiplying and dividing decimals in this section. Uh, but this video is going to concentrate on the multiplication of decimals. Now when it comes to multiplying decimals, it's very similar to multiplying whole numbers. The only thing we have to do is essentially count the number of digits to the right of the decimal when we get to the end. And we'll see that example when we work through some of them. So the first one here, we have 2.5 times 4.1. So we have multiplication of two numbers containing a decimal. I'm just going to write them vertically, 2.5 times 4.1. Now, when we multiply decimals, we, if we recall when we added or subtracted them, we lined up the decimal. That really doesn't matter here. We're just going to line them up uh, so that they're all lined up at, for different places. So let's look at this. To multiply, we just do it as we normally would. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 2 is 2. And then we move to the next place. So I'm going to put a placeholder in here. 4 times 5 is 20. Carry the 2. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2 is 10. And now we sum up these partial products, 5, 2, 0, 1. And now we have to take account of the decimal. How many digits were to the right of any decimals? Well, I have one digit to the right there and one digit to the right there. So I have two digits to the right of any decimals. So when I look at this sum of the partial products, I have to have that many digits to the right of the decimal. We counted two, so I have to have two digits to the right of the decimal. So 2.5 times 4.1 is equal to 10.25. And if we made an es estimate, 2 and a half times 4, well, that would be approximately 10 if we approximate. And this answer is approximately 10. That 0.1 made the difference. All right, let's look at this example. Now, multiplying by factors of 10, like 10 times 10 is 100, or 0 0.01 is uh, dividing by factors of 10, they actually are easier to multiply then writing it horizontally. But we'll do that example anyways. I have, and I'm just going to put the bigger number on top, 100 times 4.2. And you notice I'm not worried about where the decimal points fall. I'm just lining them up all on the uh, right side here. So now I'm going to multiply 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1 is 2. I move down, so I put in my placeholder. 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 1 is 4. And now I can sum these up 0, 0, 2, 4. Now, I only had one digit, one non-zero digit, to the right of my decimal. So I have one non-zero digit, or excuse me, one digit to the right of my decimal. So if I multiply 100 times 4.2, I get 420.0. Now, because there's no uh, value, value here, it's 0.0. It's not, it's a non -zero, there's no non-zero digit, excuse me. The decimal point isn't necessary. So we get 420. Now, 4.2 to 420, well, that's times a factor of 100. An easy way to multiply by any factor of 10, whether it's 10 or 100 or 1,000, is to essentially just move the decimal place the number of zeros we see. So if I have 4.2 and my decimal's in between here, I have two zeros. I'm multiplying by some factor of 10. 100 is a factor of 10. So I'm just going to move it one, two spots. This is where the decimal would be. I put in my placeholder. 420 is the same answer. So multiplying by a factor of 10 makes things a little bit easier if we just move the decimal. Because our decimal system is based on factors of 10. Each time we move away from a decimal, we're moving by a factor of 10. So let's look at this example. And we'll get this out of the way here. We have 4.2 times 0 0.01. Now, <clears throat> If we multiply by 100, we move the decimal to the right. If we multiply by a decimal, we move the value to the left. Now, I'll do it vertically first, 4.2 
times 0 0.01. And this leading 0 isn't necessary when I put in the multiplication. So I can say 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 4 is 4. And this 0, well, that's not going to change anything. It's just going to be a bunch of zeros. Now, I count the number of digits to the right of a decimal. Well, this is 1, this is 2, and that would be 3. 2 here and 1 there, 3 digits to the right of the decimal. So I only have 2. Well, that's where I put in a 0. And now I can add the decimal. So I have 3 digits to the right of the decimal. Well, this 4.2 is now 0 0.042. If we think about it, the number didn't change. We essentially just moved the decimal. From this point, we moved it two spots to the left. So if we're going to multiply a number like 4.2, so here's my decimal. I'm multiplying it by 0 0.01. I can just move that decimal two spots to the left, 1, 2. And then I put in my placeholder. So 0 0.042 or 0 0.042. This is just a placeholder. All right, let's look at other numbers when we multiply them. Maybe they're not factors of 10. Maybe they're similar to that first example we looked at. Here we have 52 times this quantity in parentheses, which is negative 1.2. Well, we've explored integers before. And now that we're working with uh, decimals, well, we still follow those same exact rules. So I can assess the sign first. 50, a positive 52 times a negative 1.2, a positive times a negative, is going to give me a negative answer. So I know my answer is going to be negative. So I'm going to put that negative sign in there. Now I'm going to multiply this. And notice I don't worry about where the decimal falls. I just line them up on the right side here. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 5 is 10. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 5 is 5. We'll have my little placeholder in there. Now, let me move that. When we add these partial products, we just look and say, how many digits did I have to the right of my decimal? Well, only one to the right. So I look at this, and I have one to the right. And we knew, already determined that this would be negative, because we have a positive times a negative. So this is the answer to that multiplication. Now, if I multiplied 52 by a negative 1, I'd get negative 52. But this is a little bit more than 1. So my answer is a little bit more than 52. Well, we didn't increase it that much. So we can see just by estimating our multiplication, we're on the right track. We put the decimal in the right spot. All right, let's look at this example. Here we're multiplying by 1,000, which is the same thing as 10 times 10 times 10. The number of factors of 10 that I have is equal to the number of zeros. There's three zeros. There are three factors of 10. So I'm going to use that shortcut here. I'm taking 62.3, and I'm going to move that decimal, three factors, 1, 2, 3, and put in some placeholders. So here's my new decimal. So let me move this out of the way. And we can see we have 62,300. But is it a positive or a negative? Well, let's assess that. This value was positive. This value was negative. A positive times a negative is a negative value. Now, because we don't have any uh, values to the right of this decimal, it's really not necessary. So 62,300, negative 62,300. All right, let's look at this. Now, I see we have decimals in both numbers, and we're going to multiply negative 18.1 times negative 1.01. So I notice I'm going to assess right now a negative times a negative is a positive. So my value will be positive. So I'm not going to worry about the signs too much. I'm just going to multiply 18.1 times 1.01. Now again, I just line them up to the right. I don't worry about where that decimal falls. We worry about that when we add or subtract. So now I'm going to multiply 1 times 1, 1 times 8, 1 times 1. And then we come down here. All of these values are going to be 0. 0 times 1, 0 times 8, 0 times 1. So we'll just use these as placeholders. Now we'll move to this digit. And we get 1 times 1, 1 times 8, 1 times 1. 
Now we add these partial products. 1 and 0 is 1. 8 and 0 is 8. 1 and 1 is 2. And then we have 8 and 1. Now we assess, where does that decimal go? Well, I have one digit to the right of the decimal, two digits to the right of the decimal, for a total of three digits to the right of the decimal. So I start here and I say, well, I need three digits to the right of the decimal. So we get 18 and 281 thousandths, or 18.281. And it's a positive because we assess that sign initially. A negative times a negative is a positive value. Now if we estimate, I say, well, I took approximately 18 and multiplied it by approximately 1. Well, 18 times 1 would be 18. This is still pretty close to 18. So we multiplied by a little bit more than 1. We got a little bit more than 18.